Um, I know. I'm going to talk about, yeah, Pauline Boaty, she's pronounced. I always thought it was Pauline Botty, because I, I like I like the, the slightly rude, childish humour of the word Botty, but there you go. Um, though it is appropriate in some way with one Each of her... to his own. <laughs> <laughs> it is appropriate with one of her later paintings, which I will come on to. I see. So um, she's she was born in, in Carshalton in Surrey, the youngest of four kids, in a middle-class Catholic family. She had three older brothers who teased her and a very strict father who was, was kind of more English than English because he was called Albert, but he's, he's Belgium and his mother was uh, Persian. So he became almost more British than the British. So he smoked a pipe and liked cricket and things like that. And he he didn't want and they're quite well off, really, with him being a, a chartered accountant. But um, he didn't want her to to get a job or anything like that. So she she fell out with him quite an early age. Uh, her schoolmates at school called her the Wimbledon Bardo, on account of her resemblance to the French star Brigitte Bardo. Um, but uh, just written that down to comment on when you'd finished. <laughs> But I, thought, I don't well, agree. I don't agree. Hang on, let me. Know. She wasn't attempting to look at a lot like at all. Oh, no, I don't think so. Look like her. Yeah. No, I I thought she was more like this lady. Do you remember her? On the left. Oh, on the left. Marianne Faithful. Faithful. Marianne Faithful. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I wrote that I down did. as well. <laughs> look, yeah. <laughs> What have you done? Well, oh, right. <laughs> well, there you go. There's some. I was going to mention thought, it later on. <laughs> I thought she was more more like uh, Marianne Faithful than uh, Bridget Bardo, but the, can... it was a very popular 1960s look. You know, blonde hair, long legs, attractive. <laughs> but uh, interestingly, I found out that in looking up for a photo of um, Marianne Faithful, that she's now in a care home. She? She's only yeah. a year older than me, yeah. So apparently she's had a series of health problems and a very long COVID. You've got to get used to saying that. And this is she 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 um she got interested in stained glass at the uh, when she was a student at the Royal College of Art in the stain in appropriately their stained glass department. Um and this is one of a, a an early attempts of it, which I think, which was seen as a self-portrait. I think it's really, really nice myself. I love, I love stained glass of almost any sort, though. The idea of looking through glass and seeing the colours is always so slightly magical to me. Uh, this, she, she then got into collages and became, eventually known as one of the, um, well, as the only female member of the 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 pop art generation of the early 1960s um so she was at the royal college of arts she based in london she also got involved in singing dancing acting in what they called risque reviews and even published a poem in an alternative student magazine uh, i remember those at um, university uh, having alternative two of my friends started up one called just like jesus christ said based on a song from Bob Dylan, naturally. Uh, and the only thing I can remember from it is one of the poems that had the wonderful line, she ionized me with her iron eyes. I like oh. the play on words there. So that's the only remaining element of that magazine to exist, I imagine. But she became, she also became a dancer on Ready, Steady, Go. Which um, is, is quite, I think, impressed me anyway. And why why these particular things? Well, she was also an active participant in something called the Anti Ugly Action Group, which was started up by a um, an architect. It was it was Ian Nairn who who wrote a Modern Buildings of London, and he said about the the buildings in on Clive Street blocks in Stepney. I'm too angry to write much about it before going on to argue that the old streets, by comparison, had 10 times more understanding of how people live and behave. And I think I'd agree with that. But it was also 
people were aware of their shoddy the shoddy nature of the building if you remember slightly later was the the ronan ronan point an explosion it's in canning town east london partial collapsed uh, only two months after it had opened a gas explosion blew out some load bearing walls causing causing the collapse of one entire corner of the building four people died and 17 were injured and there's the anti ugly passport that you could get mm-hmm. and there is one of their marches that they held so quite an inventive group in that case that came out of the stained glass department at the royal college of art this was this is one of um paintings by Boaty in 1962 called Epitaph to Something's Gotta Give. It's about Marilyn Monroe. Mm. But her paintings were forgotten about for over 30 years and they were just stored in a barn somewhere, I think by her brother or a relative or something. And and um, somebody, somebody suggested just getting rid of them, burning them all, which is just as well as they didn't. Because this one sold um, in March 2024, March this year, for one million six hundred and sixty-five thousand pounds, okay. which just shows you how taste can change. So that was that. I, I'm always interested in finding out what paint, what how much paintings are sold for. It tells you something about the art market, if not necessarily about the paintings themselves. This is another one like that. This is called "With Love to Jean Paul Belmondo." which was sold by a French owner of the painting. I wonder if it was um, Belmondo himself, if he was still alive. Um, th- this sold in June 1922, 20, 2022. It sold for, for nearly £1 million at Sotheby's. So our paintings are going up by about, um, it looks like about 20, 30% a year. And here's, my, here's the relationship of my earlier calling her Paul Botti. Um, it's, it's, this is a painting bum from 1966 sold for, no, it sold in 2017 for 632,000 pounds. In 1962, she was featured in a Ken Russell BBC documentary called Pop Goes the Easel. Um, she was also starring in New Wave films and, um, when Bob Dylan came to London, she showed him round. So she's very much in a kind of um, very trendy group of people, I think, at this point. But this is the slight contributions from that. It's quite impressive, isn't it? The um, I love the little clip from Alfie. Didn't know that that she's in Alfie with the Michael Caine. Um, there she is, standing with her. Uh, what do you think that painting was about? Profumo. Profumo. Yeah. That famous photograph of uh, of uh, Christine Keeler. Keeler. Yeah, uh, sitting on a chair. Rather avant-garde chair. <laughs> and that is the only photo that remains of that painting. The painting disappeared. And this is the two stills from the Ken Russell documentary, Pop Go the Easel, in 1966. She was introduced to uh, a, a boyfriend by the director, Kenneth Tynan, and she, she got married less than two weeks later. And they had the first child in 1965 when um, 
Boti was diagnosed with cancer. And at that, she refused to have the treatments that might have saved her life, but would kill her unborn baby. She gave birth to a daughter, Katie, in February 1966. Uh, Boti then began radiotherapy for her cancer, but it was too late and she died in July at the age of 28. So after her passing, her work was stored away on her brother's farm where it remained for the best part of 30 years before it was rediscovered in the 1990s. Her baby daughter was born alive, but sadly took her own life at the age of 29. Um, she, called, she was called Boti Goodwin and died from a heroin overdose on 12th of November, 1995. But in a way, they, they talk about a, a, a Boti being forgotten, but she, she wasn't really. One of her most famous paintings, The Only Blonde in the World, uh, 1963, was in, was in the Tate Britain alongside work by a friend and contemporary, Sir Peter Blake. She wasn't totally forgotten, but just more... Even though the Tate had that painting by her, she, she was, I think, largely ignored. So why does it renovate resonate so powerfully still? Well, part of it, I think, is her life story and her looks. You can't divorce that to a certain extent from her paintings, I don't think. And people said that she, she had a, a, an incredible ability to be wherever the action was. But she was also, as well as her charisma and allure, she was also had an instinct for skewering the male gaze. So this was the only blonde in the world, again, um, by Boti, which was hangs in the, the Tate. It's described as, not by me, the, has the actress contorting her face into a, a rigid smile while blank grey space threatens to blot her out. There's a, a lot going on about her now. She's now, there's an, exhibitions on about it and there's going to be a new book about her as well. So I thought it'd be interesting for you to just find out a little bit about her. And that's Pauline Boaty. I think that last painting is wonderful. It's good, isn't it? It's really good, yeah. 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 I think she's definitely worth a look at. And it, it, it mm -hmm. also tells you a lot about the time, you know, what was going on at that time. It's very I think it's a very interesting period in history, that kind of um, late 50s, early 60s, you know. Before. Yeah. So it gets a bit sort of pushed in the background by the 60s boom, but in fact, you've got big nicks and you've got poetry and music and stuff like that coming around, you know. And playwrights. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, know, I mean, it's a very sad story, isn't it? Oh, and the Alan daughter, yeah. just a year yeah. older than her mum was when she... That's... That's, yeah. that's cruel. It's cruel, isn't it? Yeah. Do you think she also resonates, certainly with us, and because we were there, weren't we? I can see those people. Yeah. I can remember David Hockney as a, as a young man being interviewed about that time as well, and he he had a pair of glasses yeah. on that read Zoom across them, and the two O's <laughs> you could see through it. <laughs> and yeah. it, I just thought they were terrific, and it was. And I remember we were always in in awe of London. Everything seemed to be happening in London, mm. and we're trying to replicate Carnaby it. Street. <laughs> yeah, trying to trying to replicate it, and trying to replicate later on in the sixties the the summer the nineteen sixty seven summer of love in San Francisco with the summer of love in nineteen sixty eight rainy Manchester didn't somehow quite live, live up to it. <laughs> We had a love-in in Platt Fields. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Hey-ho. Are, are you okay now? Yeah, yeah, I'm just pondering um, Mamselle Boti. Um, I, I'm just curious as to why all of a sudden uh, she's come back in fashion, because I don't think she's a terribly good artist. No, no, that, that it's. I, I like some of her stuff. I wouldn't say it's, but it's it's hard. I like to that last one. But the thing is, to a certain extent, what is good good art is tends to be defined by the market for it. Yeah. Well, quite. I mean, yeah. That's what the uh, it is. That's why I looked up the prices of them to see. That's one of the reasons it's coming back on uh, interest because showing them uh, in exhibitions means that the prices will go up even further if that's not slightly cynical about it. 
But also her backstory, I think, does fit in to the yeah. whole image. I was just going to say, sometimes the backstory affects the price of mm. products, doesn't it, really? You know, kind of, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a very interesting, it's a very sad, very tragic story. And, uh, yes, it is. It's and so and, and also, no her work is of its time as well, you know, kind of, um, you know, what... what yeah. But that, we I, all love an early death, don't we? I think it's all in sex form, yeah. I mean, like Mar Marilyn Monroe, for example, is forever young, forever young isn't she? You know, mm. yeah. James Dean. She's actually born in the same year as my mum, you know, like kind of when you think about it like that. And she would have been 98 if she was still alive now, you know. But Marilyn Monroe is forever the beautiful, yeah. Yeah. Well, beautiful young woman.